Imagine you're sitting at a red traffic light and then the light turns green. As you take your foot off the brake, your car senses that a vehicle approaching the intersection is moving too fast and will likely run the red light. In response, your car applies the brakes to keep you safe. Your car didn't see the other vehicle using motion sensors or cameras, which is how today's crash avoidance systems work. Instead, your car was talking to the other car wirelessly via 5G. It knew the direction of travel, the speed, and whether the other driver was braking. Your car saved your life, thanks to the power of 5G. Yeah, 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 yeah. 5G has been talked about for years, but 2020 is a year that we will actually see a major rollout. Telecom carriers such as Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T are starting their rollout. 5G is built on millimeter waves, a section of the high frequency spectrum upwards of 20 gigahertz and all the way up to 96 gigahertz. Challenge is, the higher the frequency, the shorter the range. So in real world, the 5G does not travel as well. It only really travels in a direct line of sight, kind of like a spotlight. Trees, walls, and buildings absorb, reflect, refract, and scatter the radio waves and alter the signal's polarization. Enter Mavandi, a 5G system solutions company founded in 2016. Mavandi's main goal is to solve the 5G range issues and reduce the cost of 5G deployment. Mavandi is calling their solution BeamXR, and it effectively is a signal booster and repeater that can improve the performance of millimeter wave 5G base stations by boosting signals and beamforming. Beamforming is like a traffic signaling system for a radio tower. Instead of broadcasting in every direction, it allows the signal to be targeted at the device that is using it. BeamXR modules do not replace the 5G modem, but work in tandem with the 5G modem. If a telecom carrier mounts a 5G millimeter wave antenna in front of a building, the signal might not get around the sides of the building. Movandi claims that with BeamXR, it can boost and direct a signal to where there otherwise would be no coverage, even around corners. Movandi also claims that the BeamXR can help penetrate buildings. As of April 2019, Movandi has 22 issued patents and one patent application pending. Great question. So 5G costs break down into three main areas. Spectrum, which can require licensing fees, radio access network, which are towers and physical infrastructure, and transmission, which is your cables. McKinsey estimates that over 35% of the spend will come from the radio access networks from 2020 through 2025. This 35% will be the market that Bavandi can target with their BeamXR. According to a report by Greensill, the cost to deploy a small cell ready 5G network can range from 6.8 million for a small city to 5.5 million for a large, dense city. Let's take a look at an example. As a caveat, there are many approaches that telecom companies can take to roll out 5G. They can upgrade the capacity of their existing 4G macro networks by reframing a portion of their 2G and 3G spectrum, or they can build new towers with 5G nodes. In this illustration, we're going to go with the latter example. To provide access to a high traffic density site, which uses above 0.5 petabytes per square kilometer per year, a telecom carrier will need to have a few macro or tall 5G towers and numerous nodes called small cells scattered across the city. Small cells are essentially low powered mini base stations with a range of about 10 meters. The average city block in Chicago is 100 by 200 meters. That would mean that you would need roughly 10 small cells across and 20 small cells down for a total of 200 small cells. Each small cell has an estimated implementation cost of $9,730 according to an Accenture study. That would equal $1.95 million to blanket an average city block in Chicago with 5G. Now let's say that Mavandi's solution, BMXR, can increase the range of one of these small cells by 20%. Then it would reduce the amount of small cells needed to about 136 to blanket the same Chicago city block with 5G. That would save about $622,000 in implementation costs. Note, I made some assumptions on the increase of range of the BMXR. I reached out to the company and received no response. According to the 5G Market Report 2019 through 2025, the market is expected to reach $277 billion by 2025 at a CAGR of 
I think it's safe to say that Movandi is creating products for a growing early stage market. With the speed at which technology is moving, there will be numerous applications of 5G that will likely affect all industries. One of the most important factors when looking at a company is the founders and the founding team. Most investors will prioritize a great founding team over a great idea. Vivandi was founded by Reza and Miriam Rufugaran. They are siblings, both with PhDs in electrical engineering from UCLA. Reza is one of the top patent holders in the world, appearing in 77 publications and receiving 20 international awards. Miriam has over 280 issued patents and over 53 journal and conference publications some of which have received Best Publication Awards. This is not the first company that the siblings have started. In 1998, the siblings founded Innovant Systems, a maker of integrated circuit radio transceivers. In 2000, this company was sold to Broadcom for a reported $457 million stock transaction. Reza and Miriam stayed at Broadcom until 2006. At Broadcom, they were both influential in helping to start and build up Broadcom's wireless business. Their big idea was figuring out how to put Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on an efficient, affordable computer chip. Frank Chang said, Basically, they have revolutionized the whole field by completely integrating that onto a single system on a chip. Mavandi is positioned to sell to telecom operators worldwide. The major countries pushing the 5G revolution are Japan, China, Korea, and the United States. If Bavandi's system does increase the range of one of these small cells by 20%, they could feasibly charge up to $3,000 per BMXR with installation fee. Another avenue that Bavandi can take is to sell the BMXR to corporations and consumers as a personal 5G node that they can use in their offices and houses. So yeah, Movandi has a few competitors. Some boost data capacity, some create beamforming antenna systems, some have created different types of antennas like fractal antennas, but Movandi's closest competitor in terms of product is Pivotal Calmer Wave. They've created the Pivotal Eco 5G, which is a self-installable beamforming repeater designed to allow 5G to penetrate indoors. To sum up, Movandi is not alone in this space. Mavandi has raised a few rounds of funding. Mavandi started with a total of 6,122,386 shares. On October 3, 2016, they closed their Series A round. They sold an additional 3,122,362 shares to Coda Capital and Sierra Ventures at a price of $2.90 per share for a total of $9 million raised. This brings their pre-money valuation to $17.85 million. After their Series A round, they had a total of 9,244,748 shares, with a post-money valuation of $26.85 million. At this point, Reza and Miriam still own 66.4% of Mavandi's equity. Mavandi also raised a Series B round. On November 9, 2017, Mavandi sold an additional 2,635,075 shares, valued at $9.03 per share to Wistron New Web, Drapper Nexus, Sierra Ventures, Coda Capital, and AE Investments for a total of $23.8 million. This brings the total number of company shares to 11,879,823. At this point, Mavandi has raised a total of $32.8 million. They have a pre money valuation of $85 million and a post-money valuation of $108.8 million. And at this point, Reza and Miriam own 52.2% of Mavandi's equity. Mavandi has also raised a few debt financing rounds. So in January of 2019, Mavandi raised $11 million of development capital from Optimal Investment Group. This was a debt financing round, so no equity was given. In August of 2019, they raised an additional $6 million of venture funding in the form of convertible debt from undisclosed investors. This brings the total raise to date to $49.8 million. And as of March 2020, 
Mavandi's valuation is $108.8 million. This is all great, but it begs the question, would you invest? Please leave a comment and let me know if I missed anything. Additionally, check out the description because I've added all of the links to the research I've done, and I encourage you to look into it for yourself.